Hello everyone, you're welcome to the new and new application development course. So this is the class ninth, if I'm not wrong, yeah, this is the class ninth of this application development course, which is uh, totally based on Android Studio. So actually I was continuing Android Studio in the last video, I think was a uh, text views, yeah. Uh, okay, so this time it's a uh, buttons. So my name is Anupratha Sarkar and I'm from Malikutu, West Bengal. And I'm 11 years old photo and I'm an instructor. For so, uh, by the way, please do visit my website, uh, www.appadom.so, where you will get every, each and every information related to this course, Appadom Boy. So, uh, you can visit the site and uh, today I have made a presentation too, to show you everything related to Android Studio concepts. So, let's start the class and what are we waiting for, let's go. So, let me share my screen go directly to the presentation. So yeah, I hope you can see the presentation. I hope this background was good because I like this background and I think it's good. So uh, please do uh, also comment about how this background is. Okay, so we are gonna start Android Studio buttons today. So do you know what are buttons and uh, like those things? So let's go forward and see what are we going to do. Let's see the next one. So there are three sections which I have made to make this class easier than ever and to help you understand because these are very difficult concepts of Android Studio which needs Java and code. So let's see. Uh, firstly, recap section. This is the first section of those three sections, recap section. First, Android Studio. Yeah, I know you know this, what is Android Studio, but this is the recap section. We are going to re recap what we have learned in the previous class. Because actually I think I have, uh, I had given the definition uh, just I was telling and it was not written. So today it's in an arranged manner. Uh, what is Android Studio? The first question comes, what is Android Studio that pops up in our mind? So after what is Android Studio? What are the names of the different API levels of Android? Because uh, this question doesn't pop up in uh, many of uh, those minds as because API is, uh, uh, Actually, many students do not know about API levels. So today I will uh, teach you the different API levels. I think this was in a quiz of the class eight, uh, which I have made uh, in the forms. So you will be able to attend the quiz uh, if I tell you this thing. So this is very important. Uh, I think I have I had also told you uh, about the different API levels in the previous video uh, that I showed you, but today it's written here and I will teach you from there. What are the names of the different API levels of Android? What is Java and who invented it? What are text views in Android Studio and how can we, how we can use this company? Okay, so done. Recap. After recapping, we are gonna, uh, we are gonna focus on our main concept of today's class, the reason behind today's class, the main concept, the main theory behind today's class. Okay, this is buttons. So in this section, button section, this is the second section of this class. So in this button section, we are gonna learn what are buttons, what are the different attributes of a button. Do you know what are attributes? Uh, uh, you'll be able to know what are attributes. In the last class, we did text view. We created a text view. In that text view, we uh, we uh, we did set the height width. Uh, the height we set to wrap content, and the width we set to max parent, so that the width is full and the height is up to wrap content, which is wrapping the content up to the content. So we created those and we set the gravity as well. So those are gravity, height, width, uh, and uh, text alignment. Uh, those are called attributes, color, background color, and many different things, okay. So uh, I can't remember all of those at the moment. So those are called attributes. So, and the third property of buttons will be how to set or change the properties of button programmatically. So all of which are changing to only change. How to change the properties of the button programmatically. So this uh, question deals with those things. How to change the color, how to change the background color, or how to uh, change the size or like that. Uh, programmatically, which means using Java and the Java section. So, uh, and the third one is project. What for the project? Making a text view visible and changing its text on a button. So this will be interesting. So firstly, we will recap what we have learned 
and we will know what it is which will help us to complete the third section which is a project and which will be very interesting let's go to uh, the next slide it's written here section one recap yeah you heard it right we are going to start recapping now. okay let's move on let's see what the question first let's see what the questions what is android studio what are the names of the different api levels of android who uh, what is java and who invented what are text views in android studio and how can we use uh, how we can use this component okay so let's go first android studio so i've written a large definition here so let me read it out to you and i will also help you understand the meanings android studio is simply an app development platform where we can build android apps so i think this much you can understand android studio is an app development platform where we can develop apps suppose thunkabel and code.org they were also app development platforms uh, code.org was basically uh, not uh, totally app development platform but but uh, you know thunkable which we did i think uh, the fifth or sixth class i think uh, we built a we built a portfolio app that i think we did from thunkable so thunkable is an app development platform but it's blockly and here we will learn java so this is android studio a new platform Android Studio is simply an app development platform where we can build Android apps. So I think this much you can now understand. Okay, second line. It was developed by JetBrains and Google. So these are two companies, JetBrains and Google, who uh, who developed Android Studio because this is a platform and it needs to be developed by someone. Suppose uh, Thunkable was created by Anil Sayal, so Android Studio was created by these two companies, uh, Google and JetBrains, not any particular person. Uh, what is this invention here? Here it, it come in the quizzes, I think, because I want to uh, create the quizzes right now, and uh, I think uh, I will create this quiz. So uh, please listen to this line carefully. It was developed by JetBrains and Google in the year two thousand fourteen on the month of December. I think that's why it's a cool, it's a cool platform. Uh, that's because it was developed on the month of December, which is a cool month. Okay, it works on any operating system. It works on any operating system: Windows, Linux. Mac, uh, or you can say uh, Chrome laptops. Uh, I think uh, I don't know what are those called, but yeah, Android laptops or Chrome laptops, uh, which is specially developed. It works on that operating system as well. It works on Windows too. Okay, we are using on Windows. My com my com my laptop is of Windows, so many people maximum of the uh, uh, maximum people use Windows. I think. We need to know either of the languages, Java or Kotlin, to start coding in a splendid platform. As I have already told you, this platform uses two languages, Java and Kotlin. So as I have told you, it uses Java and Kotlin. So I have written this line that we need to know either of the languages, either means any of the languages, Java or Kotlin, to start coding in this splendid platform. Splendid means wonderful, in this wonderful, in this uh, it is very nice. It is a very nice platform. So I've written, I use the word splendid uh, in this splendid platform. It allows us to create any kind of apps. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, there are many apps on Google Play Store. They are made in different platforms, but this Android Studio, uh, it, uh, it allows us to create any kind of apps by importing different libraries. So you will ask uh, um, how to create any kind of apps in Android Studio. This, uh, uh, you can see, uh, while opening Android Studio, you're, while creating a project, you'll be able to see after the project is created, you'll be able to see a Gradle folder. Inside the Gradle, there are two Gradles, module app, and I think uh, something Gradle, Gradle file. So this things here, we can import the libraries, which uh, you do, uh, which you do not need to know at this very beginning stage. But uh, I think uh, if you're uh, advanced, if you code uh, in Android Studio from, uh, I think two to three years, We'll be able to know uh, these things, uh, how to import libraries. So that's uh, we will learn that later, and we will not discuss about it now. Okay, it contains all the modern tools that an app developer requires to build a modern app. It contains all the modern tools, all the updated tools which we need to create modern apps. We will uh, slowly learn many things about Android Studio in this application development course. So in this course. In this free course, we will learn many things about Android Studio. Uh, so slowly we are uh, going to learn many things and uh, we will explore different classes and it will be a great fun. So uh, next, I think, was the API levels. What are the 
means of the different API levels of Android. API 16, G11, API 17, G11. these are the names of the APIs. So APIs, uh, there, uh, there's from API 1, but uh, uh, now generally while creating apps, we start from API 16 to API 29. I think API 30 is also developed now, uh, but I think I've not written it, mentioned it here because I couldn't find what is API 30. So we will see that practically on Android Studio. So API 6, the name of API 6 is Jelly Bean, 17 is Jelly Bean, 18 is Jelly Bean, and 19 is KitKat. 20 is KitKat was. 21 is Lollipop, 22 is Lollipop, 23 is Marshmallow. Remember the names, Marshmallow. API 24 is Eno UGAT, no GAT, I think. And API 25 is no GAT. API 26 is Uriu. API 27 is Uriu. API 28 is Pi. And API 29 is just the letter Q. So strange. So the next question comes, what is Java? And another question linked with it, that who invented it? Basically, Java is a high-level class-based object-oriented programming language that is designed to have as few implementation dependencies as possible. It was developed by James Gunting, as I already mentioned in the last video, uh, actually I searched Google then, and I showed you everything from Google itself. It was developed by James Gunting in the year 1995. It could come in the question who developed it and you share. Okay. What are text views? In Android or Android Studio, text views are referred to the components, a user interface control that is used to set and display the text to the user based on our requirements. In Android Studio or Android simply, we can create a text view in two different ways, either an XML layout file or created an activity file programmatically. So I read it very fast. So what is the meaning of this? Text view is basically a user interface. User interface means some components which we use to decorate or which we use to uh, de uh, design the, uh, which is basically uh, used for the designing purpose. Uh, UI, which is the abbreviation of user interface. So uh, this text view can be created in two different. So what, basically what is a text view? It's a user interface control that is used to set and display the text to the user based on our requirement. So uh, lastly, we saw that uh, when the button is uh, clicked, the text, uh, we set the text to uh, the button is pressed. Or I am pressed, I think, not the button, the text view itself. When it is pressed, uh, it will show I am pressed. So that is to up to a requirement that we are setting that text to I am pressed. So in Android Studio, simply Android, we can create this text view. We can import this text view to the screen in two different ways. Firstly, uh, you uh, you know only one way, as because uh, in the basic part, I will teach you one way, and slowly when we are going to develop advanced apps, we will learn it both ways. So firstly, we can create in the XML layout file, which is just dragging or writing the code that uh, angle bracket takes you and then uh, components. So this is the first way. This two combines the first way. So the second way is in the activity file programmatically, which means uh, suppose in the Java file, suppose in the main activity, we, put, uh, we want to create another text view. So that we will learn in the later part of this application development course, how to create it. When the user, suppose what the user is pressing a button, it will add one more button. That is a, 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 that is a, an advanced logic. We will learn it in the data part of this application development course itself. So interesting, right? So I think it's over the section A or section one. Now I think the section two buttons. So basically I want to mention something here. I want to go back to this section, to, to this slide, the second slide. You can see the first slide is recap, which we have completed. I think uh, is there a tick mark here, so I will add it here. No, there's no tick mark, no need for that. Okay, so the, in this recap, we have done the recap and it was a nice section. So uh, uh, out of this three sections, this number one section is uh, based on uh, this reading, this theory, and the second and third is doing it practically. So in the second, you can see what are buttons. This only we have to know what are buttons and then we are going to open Android Studio and we are going to work on Android Studio. So let's see what are buttons. So this is section two buttons. Let's see what are buttons. In Android 
studio, a button is referred to as a component that consists of text or an icon, or both text and an icon. It communicates what action occurs when the user touches it. It depends on the function we assign to a button programmatically. So what does this thing mean? In Android Studio, a button is basically, there's a button. So what's a button? A button is basically referred to as a component. It is also a component, user interface control component, like the XP. It's also a component, but it consists of, yeah, it's uh, likely consists of text and an icon of both text and an icon. So you will ask, uh, 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 how does a uh, button contain icon? So in many apps, uh, you will see sign in with Google. You can see here, uh, there's a, there's an icon, Google's sign, and then it's written sign in with Google. So that's both text and an icon. And in some buttons, there's only uh, logos like even Google, Microsoft, like that. Okay. So these are examples of, and uh, there are common examples of buttons with text, like uh, buttons are written, press me. These are the three examples of a button with a text, a button with an icon, and a button, button with, a, with both text and an icon. That's fun. That was fun with these examples. So that communicates. What does this mean? Communicates. So we add listeners. It will listen. When it will be pressed, what will happen? We will uh, assign a functionality. So in the last line, you can see, it depends on the function we assign to the button programmer. So uh, in the calculator button, is equal to button when we, play, uh, when we will press, what will happen? It will sum up all the things. It will sum up all the works uh, which you have typed in the calculator and it will give a result to you. So, uh, uh, and uh, when you're clicking on a button to add your alarm, what it will do? It will open the bottom navigated activity, which is called, yeah, the bottom navigated activity uh, where you will enter the schedule when uh, you need to, uh, uh, when you need to allow yourself for any activity. So, and you set the ringtone and you give the alarm. Okay. So, that are functions which we assign to the button. Or simply, when a button is clicked, change the text to I am pressed. So, that's assigning a function to the button programmatically. So, now we're going to work. Let's see what's uh, in the second. What are the different Attributes of a button. We are likely uh, we are going to create a button in Android Studio. And we are going to run. So let's continue. Let's open Android Studio. It's loading. It will take some time. Uh, in the last video, by the way, in the last video, I have uh, already shown you how to install Android Studio. Not uh, particularly I have downloaded because I had already downloaded Android Studio. So it's, uh, I think it's my project. So it's loading and we'll change this to close project. Okay. So that's Android Studio. Let's click on create new project. And I will show the API here and also uh, what a button actually is. So we are going to select empty activity as it, uh, it will only contain uh, the main activity and nothing else. Uh, we are not going to uh, use basic activity, bottom navigation activity, or no activity. We are going to use empty activity. And let's name the application. So, downloading. As I have already uh, told you, Java and Kotlin are the two languages. And here are the APIs. API 16, as I have told you, Jelly Bean. 17 is Jelly Bean. 18 is Jelly Bean. 19 is a uh, KitKat and 20 API is not given here. It's KitKat words. 21 is Lollipop. 22 is Lollipop. 23 is Marshmallow. 24 is Nogat. 25 is Nogat. 26 is Oreo. 27 uh, uh, is also Oreo. 28 is Pi. 29, as I have already mentioned, is Q. And 30, which I haven't told, here you can see it's R. This is a single letter. We decided to use a single letter from now. Okay, the minimum SDK we will use API 16 so that it runs on each and every device because it will run on approximately 99.8% devices that uh, Android is made. So let's click on finish. And it's going to create the app. So let's click on Zoom. And it Zoom box. Okay, let's let it close and let it import all the things in the project. It's fun creating apps on Android Studio. And I like, and I really like creating apps on Android Studio. Let's 
constructing cortex. So you know, in this step, you need to be patient as it is building the gradual model. It will take some time and then it will eventually sense. Okay, step five, step next and done. So now let's go to activity main and let's click on split because it gives a better view of everything. So let's increase the size. No, not too much. Okay. So now what we will do is that we will shift this and drag to the next one. And we will remove this text. Let's set the constraint layout to linear layout, which we will work on in this uh, Android development case. Basically, this is a very popular layout. Uh, so linear layout basically it's by default it, uh, it aligns everything horizontally so in order to align everything vertically we need to set the orientation to vertical so let's type orientation at uh, it's a smart platform and it automatically counts orientation let's click on that let's vertical okay done and now it should be aligned vertically let's click on person save and now let's click on uh, let's make a button click on angle uh, brackets start the angle brackets and now here you can see button click on that uh, it tells you to give the layout width and the layout map. Uh, set the layout width to it's 50 dp. No, it's not enough. I think 90 dp. Not enough. Let's see. Oh, 70 dp. Yeah, enough. The height, uh, let's say 80 dp. No, not enough. 70 dp. Yeah, enough. I think we need to decrease this to 60 dp. That part is almost conclusion. So now let's set the gravity of this linear layout. So how will it align all that? Let's set the gravity to center. So everything is aligned in the center. So uh, firstly, let's go to let's go to let's click on rest and values. Let's go to themes. Click on this themes folder and it will open this thing. So delete this style as because uh, Android Studio only lets it uh, create violet buttons. Move this. And click drops. You will be able to see that the color is gone. Let's set up a personalized color. Actually, I introduced to a tool last day htmlcolorcodes.com. It's a very powerful tool if you want to select your color code and you are not getting options. Okay, so beautiful color palette, which I like most, the best feature of this platform. So I like this sky blue color. Let's click on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Open that. Okay. Yeah. We are clicking on the sky blue. You can uh, uh, set it to your own personalized color. So I will write it yellow over blue color. So you need to select that only. Click on that now. And set this color too. Okay. Done. Set the color, text color too. Say, you can see the text size is too small to be seen by us. Let's say the gravity of this button also to be center so that it's aligned its text to the center. Okay, so let's increase its text size to 21 ST. So text size is measured in ST. Now you can see it's visible. Yes. So you can see it's a beautiful button. Uh, yeah. Now, this is the attributes. This is a few attributes of a button. So, instead of doing this center, we can set the gravity. This is just to show you one new, this is just to introduce you to one new attribute. Click on gravity and click on uh, center of vertical. The center button. And now we will do text alignment. Now you can see the same thing happens. So I think it's uh, okay. Center. Let's say it's inconsistent alignment. Okay. So it's telling us to set in the gravity. So let's set the gravity to center, but it's a new attribute. 
text alignment which aligns the text horizontally to the center. Okay. So let's see what else we can explore. Yeah. Uh, the text style. Text style, we can put it in bold. Yeah, it looks bolder. But it's like it's slanting like that. Okay. So what if we want to set it to put bold in it like? What do you do? Let's first set it to bold. Okay. Now let's open the screen to go. So I will show you. So I will show you. shift and this backslash button. So this uh, straight line will be entered. So in our keyboard, press shift along with shift, press this backslash, which you can get below backspace. Click on that. Oh, please, let's do that. Yeah. We can get this straight line. After the straight line, type it link. So you can see bold and it link together. So what are we going to do? So these are the different attributes of the button. So let's go to PowerPoint presentation and let's see how to change the properties of a button programmatically. So let's change the properties of a button programmatically. Let's go to Android Studio and let's decide a small project by us. We will, uh, uh, we will do that project later because that's in the third section. But uh, it's a project, it's a mission for us that we have to change this button text programmatically. For that, first we set the ID. Of the button to Android plus ID set, it is showing the red because we haven't entered the ID till now. After entering the ID, it will turn green. So, uh, uh, what is the ID? Press me. Done. Go to main activity and press enter here to create your space and get the right side. So, press private text view. Press me button. Here we are creating this button's name because no one knows what is a press me button till now. Till we assign this text, oh, sorry, not text view, till we assign this button's value to that press me. So no one knows what is a press me button. So this private, private means it will create on this, uh, just on, on this, uh, it's accessible to just this main activity and if we create main activity too, it will not be accessible. So that means private. So it's only in this private area, private button. It's a button, so we are inputting the uh, thing button here. Uh, let me delete that, you don't need to do that. Firstly, let's uh, type private button and then press the button. This button will be automatically imported. First, we type B-U-T-T -T and press on this, else it will not be imported. Uh, click on this button and then press me button. Uh, you can name it on your own choice. Press me button, I have named it. So here you can change the ID as well. Uh, it's upon your wish, but the code, but the codes must be accurate to run the program. After the set continue, uh, make a space for you. Uh, so help yourself to make a space by clicking on enter button. So now we will type press me button. You can see it's recognizing press me button. But now no one knows what is a press me button. Press me button is equal to we are giving the definition. What's a press me button? Press me button is equal to R, which, is, which means rest and this layout, that ID. It is the ID. What's the ID? Press me. So now it's recognized. So if, now if you tell that press me button, will, it will be clicked, changes color and background color. So that works. Now if you write press me button, the upside down click less enough. Will be applied to that particular thing. So if I remove this line, this will not turn it. As because there is a press me button and no one knows what's a press me button, but it will just try to apply, but it will never find what's a press me button. So better keeping this line to identify this button, this particular button. That will nothing will happen if you remove this find view by id r dot id dot press me. Only if you click on that button, that functionality will not be applied on that button. Nothing will work. It will be an error. So after press me button that said click listener in this bracket you will write new and then u dot on click you will type v and this will come view dot on click listener uh, between the second bracket dot 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 click on that and it will create a space for you to type the on click functionality when it will be clicked what will happen first we will change the text sorry 
Now it will be press me button dot set text. What will the text? I am press. Okay. Then, uh, what is the color? The text color. background color because we have to uh, else we have to enter this in the integer so when it will be clicked it will show i am pressed so let's run it in a physical device and see if it's done okay so let's see friends i am with a mobile phone and an usb wire so i have already shown you how to connect the usb wire to the laptop and to the mobile as well so uh, please see the last video to connect the USB wire, and if you can, then it's very nice. Uh, if you uh, cannot uh, see the option in this uh, box that uh, it's your device, so this device is Samsung GS6 Plus, and if it is not seen here, that means we haven't uh, enabled the developer option. For that, you can see other videos, uh, other troubleshoot videos, so that will be helpful for them. Okay, so I have connect this thing. So now let me see if the option comes. Yeah, physical device, Samsung SM6610F. So now let's run this app. Uh, slowly the gradle build will be running and the app will be installed. The physical device. I'm using a physical device here as because the physical device it shows the best as because uh Users will use this app in the physical device, and we have to know how it looks at the physical device. If it's bad in the physical device, then the user will get bad outputs on their device. Uh, in this step, also we have to be patient as because if the output and output needs some time when we insert the input here, your code is the input and it's processing, and your output is just going to be launched and installing. Oh, super cool. I think it's launched. How was the new app launch? Uh, I think, uh, one sec. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, one thing which we checked before and that. Let's go to themes and let's change this theme to no option bar so that it remains like that in the mobile device. So let's click on run and let's wait for it to run in the device. So you can see your oh, thank you you able to see your now. Yeah, you can see. Let me press it. Yeah, you can see I am pressed. So it's working perfectly fine. So that's how we can change the attribute text of button programmatically. So now let's work with both the text and buttons in the current section, which is the project section. So let's go. So here in this second section, it's completed and we can close this. We can close this uh, as well. So now is the chance of the third section. Okay, so let's continue. So let's start the third section, which is the project section. Making a text view visible and changing its text on a button click. So, your section three project. Let's open Android Studio again. It's opening. It's opening up. It will take some time. Uh, by the way, we have to open this. Uh, we have to open the slide two to, to see the topic. So that's our last project. We need to sync this to a new project. This is a file. New new project. Title. Empty activity. And then, uh, what was the name? 
project. Well, you can uh, give the name according to your choice. Project dot happy down coding. Oh, sorry, project dot down coding. Plus. Okay, it, this would be API 16 and Java. So let's do and finish. It will automatically terminate that today. Wait, this one. It may take some time. It's a uh, building the rattle files. So by the way, this class was cool. I, uh, I'm very interested. I was very interested to do that class. And now I'm feeling that how uh, engaging this class is with Android Studio. It's a very nice platform to build apps. And I will teach you uh, many things related to Android Studio. This tutorial. So it's finally done. Let's go to activity me. Let's you can split. Delete this text view over here. Because we are going to create one more text view. Uh, yeah, let's uh, shift this XML and write to the next sign. And let's make a linear layer. So now I'm doing fast because we have already done with this. So it's red, click on the like, e bracket and click on slash. So it'll automatically generate linear layout. Uh, click on orient, uh, uh, right? So OR and it will come orientation, press that and click on vertical. So now it will align it vertically. Okay. So firstly, we will add one button. Uh, the buttons which will be, um, let's say, what what it be? And please use one. Uh, I could be seventy dB or sixty dB. Let's say sixty dB is fine. And the width, let me increase it to two hundred or three hundred. And let's say the gravity of firstly, let's say the gravity of this linear layout to Center, so it will align everything in the center. Absolutely the center. Click on slash so it will close this tab and let uh, set other attributes. Uh, firstly, the text will be um, press me for the magic. Um, so here you can see everything is in the capital. So by text all caps, which are just two forms. I can see it's in the form as we wrote here. So increase the text size here, and here we will not change the color of anything. 5 SP, 21 SP. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna set the text. We're gonna make a text view and we are gonna set uh, the width to match parent and the height to wrap content. Uh, the text of this text view to nothing. Firstly, for recognizing, let's set the uh, text of this text view to text view and let's set the gravity of this or the text alignment of this to center so it will align the text. You can see it's set in line, but I think it tells us to use the gravity feature. Let's set the gravity. You can see it's aligned in the center. So now we are going to set the color of this text color to black. We're going to set text size to 22 as So it's now much increased and it looks beautiful. Let's set the text style. We will implement all the things we have learned. Set bold and eight likes as well. No, it's not looking nice. Let's remove this text style. Uh, I, uh, I already uh, I did this here to show you what we have learned. So we have learned this too, but uh, here it's not looking nice, so we will not apply. So visibility. Let's set this visibility. It's a uh, this is a, a new thing. This is a new attribute we have learned. Set it to invisible. Uh, and now you can see the text view is invisible. So what we will do is when the button will be clicked, we will uh, um, set the visibility of the text view to be 
to uh, set visibility of that to visible and we will change the text to let's say app down coding that's right simple okay so press for the magic let's add an exclamation mark without an exclamation so let's set the id for both the text view and the button let's set the id of the text view to the text view and for the button only because there's no other element other than button and text view in our book go to main activity and create make that private so I, I think i don't need to explain that again as i have already explained again and again in the previous video on this part as well so private text view um, let's say text view so create private button so that doesn't matter according to the id because i have set this to text view if this was text view 1 2 3 4 5 then also if i am doing this text view it doesn't matter because we are giving the definition of the text view to be text view 1 2 3 4 5 or text view or let's say uh text view to be seen like that we are setting the id so now what we will do is that text view it's already created is equal to find view by id i think i have already explained what is this yeah. find view by id r dot id dot text uh and then end this with a semicolon. This is very yes, that's enough. Find you by id dot id dot. Yeah. Okay. So now when this button is click button dot set on click less now. You like you and click on B and press this. So when it will be clicked, what will happen? Text view dot set visibility dot set visibility view dot visible. So remember, not only visible view dot visible. So let's see what to that. So when it will be clicked, it will set the visibility of the text view to be view dot visible, not only visible view dot visible. And after that, we change the uh, uh, we have uh, we have to change the text of the text view. Happy down coding. Plus nine. Plus nine. And one more trick here. We will just uh, to learn. We will set the visibility of the button to invisible. So it will be next. Nice. So click on C, and I already have the emulator now. Uh, click on this run button. So you must have the emulator. You as because uh, it runs the best on the physical device. So let's see. Let's go. I'm waiting for the app. That was a fantastic class, and I hope you all have enjoyed. So now process. Once I will test, then I will show you. It's calling. Boom, oh, it's lost. It's going to work nicely, but only if there's one problem which we will have to fix now. This the size of this text is too large. Let's set this to 17 is and let's relaunch this. Right. If you have to relaunch and apply this uh settings, you can click on this apply changes and restart it to so it, or it not need to install like that, it will do this in that way. So let's see if uh, that is applied. Else we have to run the app again. We will tell that uh, we can't apply like that in the field app. So if it tells like that, we have to run the app again. So it's going to work. So now we can show it to you. First, we project for Okay. So yeah. 
press for the magic when clicking on this you can see after i'm putting your sign so today's class is over today and the project was awesome and we did finish the project and before going i will tell you one thing let's go last slide so before going i want to tell you all this happy coding and that's the end of this video so we hope you enjoyed this video bye bye video in the next video